Dance. Amabage, which means uh, Ama Hill. Ama is the island we are on. Uh, Bage is the Danish word for hill. And we have no hills on Ama. Amabage is at, at its summit, uh, almost 100 meters tall. You have uh, like almost uh, half a kilometer uh, of skiing. It is really sort of a, a man-made mountain of uh, activity. I mean, first time I saw it was on Netflix, maybe like everybody else, but it's way, it's way cooler to see it in real life. It's, uh, it's, quite, a, it's quite a mountain, actually. <laughs> My name is uh, Bjarke Ingels. Uh, I am an architect and the founder of BIG, Bjarke Ingels Group. My name is Jesper Schade. I'm a professional free skier and uh, I do it because it's fun. What you're doing as a profession is almost finding ways to reinterpret some of the things you, you find in a, in, a, in a way that, that goes beyond the, the immediate prescribed behavior and, and take it, takes it to the next level. It was interesting meeting Derke because he was like in just 15 minutes he pretty much figured out the, f the future of free skiing. This whole idea started because we were invited to do the building around uh, a power plant that was going to be the cleanest waste to energy power plant in the world. We want the world to know about this so that the people will come in and try this new kind of hybrid between a building and a landscape. And of course, we would also love the people that are the best at what they're doing to come and play with it. Because one of the amazing things about people that love what they do and that are experts at what they do is that it's so incredibly inspiring to see them do what they do best. I really want to see Jesper do his art uh, on, uh, on the roof because it's going to be incredible to see the ideas we had you know, eight years ago, and we've been struggling with realizing, uh, you know, almost for a decade, to actually see them become the canvas uh, in the hands of a master uh, like Jesper and, and, and really put our early ideas into, uh, into fruition. I mean, this, this building made it so easy for me to figure out what to do for this project, because it's not really about what tricks I do, it's more like actually skiing down a building, that's, that's the cool thing. So it was really easy to figure out the line down the building. One of the amazing things about architecture is that it is the art and science of creating the framework for the life we want to live. And it's also the art and science of turning fiction into fact. We've been working with this idea uh, for like um, maybe a decade and a half that we call hedonistic sustainability. And that's because 
If sustainability is always seen in the context of this kind of urgent situation, the world is going down the drain, we need to be sustainable, we can't have the quality of life we're having now, it's, it's almost this Protestant idea of taking cold showers in the morning, you know, like uh, it has to hurt to do good. But what if sustainable cities and buildings actually are not about all the things you can't do, but all the things you can do? What, what if a sustainable city or sustainable building actually has more opportunities, is more enjoyable than the non-sustainable one. So it's that mindset that hedonistic sustainability teaches you that by thinking about sustainability, you're also thinking about a city that's more exciting and more fun to live in. Let's say eight years ago, we were brainstorming and we came up with this like crazy idea, like a power plant where you could ski on the roof, you could climb on the facade. And then we, you know, we had to like solve a lot of things. We had to like make a lot of technical solutions, apply, get a lot of permits. And very soon, it's gonna be a fact that in Copenhagen, we ski on the roofs of our power plants. And just to put it in perspective, my son is four months old. He probably won't remember a thing for, for the next two years. So he probably won't even realize that there was a time when you couldn't ski on the roof of the power plants. So imagine for him and his entire generation, they're gonna take for granted that power plants, they're clean and they're like the coolest parks. You can climb the facades, you can ski on the roofs. So if that's gonna be his and his generation's baseline, imagine how far they're gonna be able to imagine into the future. What's inside the man-made mountain and the reason that you have mist coming from the slope at different times, it's the byproduct of the processes that happens inside the mountain and it's essentially a waste to energy plant where they use the waste of the five municipalities surrounding uh, Copenhagen as the fuel to create both district heating and electricity. Copenhagen is a city where 97% of the homes get their heat as a byproduct from the energy production. So it's essentially a way of thinking rather than burning stuff to heat our homes and also burning other stuff to create power and finding ways to get rid of our waste. You combine all three things into this waste to energy co-generation plant where power, district heating and waste disposal is combined into a single process. The second you create something new, it's almost like opening a door that others can walk through because in a few months, when the power plant is finally open and the park is open, you can say, well, in Copenhagen, they're skiing on the roofs of their power plants, their, their waste management is also their energy supply, which is also their heat supply. So those examples that are built and functioning, they don't only solve the little challenge of powering Copenhagen and sort of recycling and, and renewing, extracting the energy from the, from the waste, uh, but they're also becoming a beacon that others can look to and say, if they can do it in Copenhagen, why can't we? As human beings, we are explorers. We need to set ourselves bold and brave goals. That's why we love sports, because we love when, when people like Jesper move the target of what's imaginable and possible to do with two uh, planks on your feet. In a similar way, uh, as a species, we need to set bold and brave goals. Of course, one bold and brave goal we have right now is to not ruin the planet we're living on. One of the sources of problems here on Earth is carbon emissions. Uh, that we're emitting too much CO2, we're causing global warming. 
because it all comes from fossil fuels. On Mars, there are no fossil fuels. So if we want to live on Mars, we need to be able to supply all of our lifestyle with renewable energy. So in that sense, almost at a, at a planetary perspective, if we ever dream of going elsewhere, we really need to develop those techniques here. In a way, what, what eventually might allow us to be able to survive as a species on Mars are the same technologies that are gonna allow us to become great custodians of the planet we've inherited and evolved on.